Back to our top story now, the continuing fallout from diplomat Richard Colvin's suggestion last week that Canada handed over detainees in Afghanistan who were eventually tortured by Afghan authorities. As promised, Wendy's here with a different take on all of this. That's right, Peter. The, actually, the, the Tories have been making promises for years about making the federal government more accountable. And so we set out to see what's really changed and what that could mean for Richard Colvin. Take a look at a bit of background here. Remember the sponsorship scandal? Well, Alan Cutler was the public servant who blew the whistle on that. He is a genuine Canadian hero. During the 2006 election, Cutler even ran as the Tories' accountability candidate. Toss out the Liberals, they promised, and we'll deliver a more honest, more accountable and transparent government. The Harper government's first piece of legislation was the Accountability Act, with a $1,000 reward for public servants who reveal government wrongdoing. These people will be protected and rewarded. But since in office, affection for whistleblowers seems to be fading. Linda Keene raised concerns about safety at the Chalk River nuclear reactor. She was let go. Canadian food agency worker Luc Poimarlo was fired after leaking a secret cabinet document about food inspections. And now, of course, Richard Colvin, who says he sent lots of memos warning the government about abuse in Afghan prisons. And the likelihood is that all the Afghans we handed over were tortured. Instead of giving him a $1,000 check, government MPs have attacked Colvin and his testimony. He absolutely lacks credibility. Colvin's now a senior intelligence officer at the Canadian Embassy in Washington. Defence Minister Peter McKay seemed to suggest that promotion could be his last from this government. That promotion took place, or it did take place, long before he gave his evidence you yesterday. So tonight we're asking, does Canada really protect whistleblowers? All right, well, let's start with all those promises of transparency and accountability. What happened to those? Well, we wanted to ask Peter McKay uh, how those promises to clean up government, to make it more transparent, how they fit with their treatment of Richard Colvin. Uh, so we asked for an interview, but uh, he wasn't available. But the sponsorship whistleblower was available to talk. So I headed to Ottawa to catch up with Alan Cutler uh, this morning in Ottawa. Let's listen to what he has to say. So what do you think watching uh, Richard Colvin's testimony and, and particularly the reaction to it? The initial reaction is always the same reaction it will be every time. Kill the messenger. They never listen to the message, they attack the messenger. It's, nothing has changed. Whether his message is accurate or not is not an issue because all it takes is a person with an honest belief that he has information coming forward. What do you think is going to happen to his career? Oh, his career is dead. He, he does not have a career. He is a, think for yourself, he's in a highly sensitive area in Washington, D.C. Who's going to trust him? His colleagues are probably running for the hills to get away from him and keep their distance from him. Anybody who has sensitive issues to send to him are going to be worried that he might report them. It, he's never going to recover from this. But Never. This wow. This is a guy who ran for the Conservatives. That's right. They really <laughs> courted him and he bought in, but not so much now. Okay. Part of the Accountability Act was meant to uh, protect people who whistleblow. Right. What kind of protection can uh, Colville expect? Well, the Act established something called the Public Sector Integrity Commission. It sounds pretty big and important. It's, it's meant to investigate allegations of wrongdoing and also to protect people who, uh, from reprisals if they do speak out. So I met up with the commissioner today and obviously asked her what she thinks of the treatment of Colvin and his testimony. Uh, she said she can't tell me that it's confidential. She can't even confirm if she's following the case. Listen in. It's pretty clear, it's, this case has been so public, it's very much on the record, and it's very clear that senior members of government, uh, cabinet ministers, have said that this individual is not credible and suggested that he was lucky to get the promotion that he got. Um, doesn't that sound like a reprisal? Isn't that, couldn't you say whether it's clear now whether or not that's a reprisal? Fortunately, I can't comment on the specific case. And uh, I should stress, however, that the jurisdiction covers 400,000 public servants. We have no jurisdiction in the area of elected officials' uh, responsibilities. So, so a an MP would fall outside the legislation? That's correct. 
I'm just wondering, aren't you afraid that this might set back the cause of transparency of people wanting to come forward? I, you know, sincerely hope not. I think that Canada is still a model around the world on the democracy, on the but quality of its public. Scare some system. people off, you know, seeing what's happened. What I would say to them is, come to us, come to our office. We'll work with you. We will guide you in, you know, making the decision that you think is the right one. But Alan Cutler says people aren't going to the commission. He's formed a support group for whistleblowers and says most of them just don't trust the commission. Here he is again. So what happens when whistleblowers do go to the commissioner? As far as I know, they don't. Why not? <laughs> because of the fact that when they do, they don't get a good reaction and they come away wondering what's wrong. A lot of whistleblowers, and that's where my organization comes in, they come to us and their story is all over the place. They don't know how to explain what they're doing because they're under such stress. And so we spend the time and trouble sorting it out, listening to them, organizing their information, and finding out whether we think there's a valid case. And they even admitted to me they don't do that at her office. And the budget actually seems to confirm that not many people are going to the commission. Its budget in 2007 was 6.5 million. Now it's been cut almost in half, in part because of so few takers. Down to 3.6. And they're certainly not spending the, the budget on legal fees for whistleblowers. The maximum amount for legal representation for a whistleblower is between 1,500 and 3,000. That's not a lot of law, a lawyer time. And another suggestion of the Commission's limitations, after two years of work, it reports it's been unable to confirm a single case of government wrongdoing and not a single case of reprisal either. So think we're talking about a pool of 400,000 employees here and not a single case of wrongdoing. Good story. Thank you. Good work. Thank you. Wendy Mesley on the case for us today.